your Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It is Kush back at it with the 16th preview video of the season. That's right, guys. It is, well, it's technically 15th preview video, but week 16. The NFL season is almost over and it felt like it just began, man. What, what a crazy season it's been. Giants versus Ravens. We're going to be visiting them at MNT Bank Stadium down in Baltimore, Sunday, December 20, uh, 27th, 2020. I mean, um, I'm currently recording this on Christmas Day, so Merry Christmas to the members that will see it. You know, Christmas evening, you know, probably later on tonight. For those of you that are not members of the channel, you guys are probably going to be seeing this on Boxing Day, December 26th. So first and foremost, the injury report, which is why I even delayed making this in the first place because it was such an extensive injury report. I'm actually going to start off with the Ravens this time. They have a bunch of people on the injury report, but a good amount of them went from did not practice to full practice. Des Bryant, limited practice Thursday. Calais Campbell, limited practice. Anthony Levine, limited practice. Pernell McPhee, full practice. Marcus Peters did not practice Ty Phillips uh, full practice did I read that right yeah Ty Phillips full practice uh, Matt score full practice Jimmy Smith did not practice Christian Welch full practice Patrick Ricard full practice Marquise Hollywood Brown did not practice Mark Ingram did not practice and, and this is a confusing injury report because I honestly don't know who's gonna play and who's not gonna play you're probably not gonna see that until Friday I'm gonna assume you know going into this game that the big players for the Ravens the guys that matter the most are gonna be in some type of way in the game on Sunday so that means I am assuming that Hollywood Brown is gonna see some time you know I'm assuming that Calais Campbell is gonna see some time that Marcus Peters might see some time but I don't know maybe those guys won't see any time at all you know specifically like Brown Ingram Smith Peters they all did not practice we'll, we'll see when it comes around though and then for the Giants even weirder of an injury report now of course uh right now there's no telling whether daniel jones is gonna start or not i'm actually doing this preview video assuming he's not gonna start assuming that they take the safer route and whatnot uh there was literally nothing listed for any giant player on thursday you know this is on giants.com the ravens injury report is also on giants.com because they're our opponent this week nothing was listed for these giants players on thursday they were all in limited practice on wednesday so that's jones ingram holmes Pert, tate I want to say Pert is going to play. I want to say Evan Ingram is going to play. I don't know about Golden Tate, Holmes, or Jones. You know, on the brightest side, Tate will also play. But because Holmes was out last week, and of course, the DJ with his double injury, he might not play. But it's so weird that there was nothing listed for these guys on Thursday. I don't know what Giants.com got going on. And now to get into the actual preview part of the video here. So let's start off first with Blake Martinez of the New York Giants and Blake Martinez is linked to our middle linebacking core. Now Blake Martinez is of course a great linebacker for the Giants right now. He's doing great things. Pro Bowl snub. You guys know how I feel about him. An absolute tackling machine that's having one of the best years if not the best year of his career and also doing you know fairly well in pass protection as well. Well Blake is going to be mashed up against the <laughs> the toughest running offense of the entire year in the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens are the number one ranked rushing offense in the league. We all know that they have a good running back, you know, duo slash trio going on there. Recently, it's been more of J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards running the rock. Mark Ingram, you know, hasn't seen it that much in recent weeks, but don't count him out. That's why I'm saying a trio. And in addition to that, you got Lamar Jackson, who's running around crazy as well. Number one ranked rushing offense. Blake Martinez is going to have his hands full along with the Giants defensive line. So I'm going to throw him in there as well. Leonard Williams, Dalvin Thomason, Dexter Lawrence. These guys are going to be in charge of stuffing this run. And I do have confidence that they could do so considering that we did a pretty good job of stuffing Cleveland's Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. Another great rushing offense in the NFL. Still ranked third overall despite the fact that the Giants actually held them, you know, just to a little over 100 rushing yards. Now, I expect that we can do this because guess what? The Ravens offense, just like the Giants offense, runs through the running game. If we can make the Ravens offense one dimensional, if we could stop that run, that power run of, you know, of, of Gus Edwards, of Mark Ingram, if we could stop that at the line of scrimmage and stop the more elusive one and maybe, you know, J.K. Dobbins or sometimes even Edwards breaks out one to the outside where our linebackers will take care of it and Blake Martinez could come up the middle as well to stop them. 
we can stop the run, stagnate it a little bit, and force Lamar Jackson to throw and force the Ravens wide receivers to do something because the Ravens wide receiving core hasn't been that great this year, then we're in a good shot right now with the Giants defense, which brings up the next Giants player in James Bradbury. We're going to get back the number one corner of the Giants and possibly the number one corner of the league. Call it my big blue bias if you want. But James Bradbury, in my opinion, is a top three, maybe even top two cornerback in the league right now. And I expect him to have a good time against the Ravens offense. Once again, with wide receivers that have been struggling. In fact, similarly enough to us, in passing offense, the Baltimore Ravens are ranked 31st in the NFL. Yes, you heard that right. 31st passing offense. They are worse than the New York Giants which I find surprising as well, but a lot of it has to do with the fact that they, they're not sure who their number one receiver is or if they even have a number one receiver. Kind of similar to the New York Giants and our problem with our receivers. So that brings their overall offense down to sixth in the NFL. Now it's obviously way up there because of their rushing attack. And once again, like I said, if you could stop the rush and force them to pass, we're gonna be in a good set. And James Bradbury matched up against Marquise Hollywood Brown. I think that's an automatic win for James Bradbury. No disrespect to Brown, but we're talking about <laughs> Bradbury and you know a all pro level corner here who stopped guys like you know DK Metcalf, Allen Robinson, Amari Cooper, you name it, back when he was in Carolina, Mike Evans, Michael Thomas, James Bradbury's been all over the league. I don't expect him to have any type of trouble with Hollywood. And if they keep Bradbury on the same side of the field, which is usually what they do, although in recent weeks they've had to have him travel a bit more, even if they have him travel, we're gonna be shut down with Bradbury. If they have him on one side, that entire shot side of the field is gonna be shut down. What does that mean? Rest of the cornerbacks, you gotta do at least a little bit good of a job. It's still not clear whether or not Darnay is gonna play. If Darnay does play, I got faith in him having a good, you know, matchup against whoever the Ravens put in the slot. Like honestly, other than Brown, I'm not really scared of Sneed. I'm not really scared of Boykin. You know, although I did want Miles Boykin a couple drafts ago. Des Bryant, who was even questionable, you know, shout out to Des. He finally got to throw up the X after, you know, what, two, three years. It's Des Bryant at this point in his career. Our cornerback core, our secondary might be catching a break this game considering who we matched up against. And then with safety help over the top, just re-signed Logan Ryan. Love that dude. Great free safety. Jabril Peppers coming down in strong packages, being a strong safety. That brings the boom, which will also help once again with the run game. We're going to be fine, I think. And getting back to the defensive line real quick, matched up against a Ravens offensive line that has struggled at times during this year. I think that, that that's going to be a better matchup than people expect. I feel like Giants fans might be expecting an automatic W for our defensive line. I don't necessarily think so. You know, this is still a Ravens, you know, team that has the number one rushing attack. I think we're going to get some good stops. But in terms of pressures, not sure what to expect. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Leo has is, is been, you know, some games he's a monster. Some games he's just there and great in the run stuffing. I think this might be one of the games where he's just there in the run stuffing as well. And then, of course, since I'm talking about the Giants defense with the Baltimore Ravens offense, you have a dynamic guy in Lamar Jackson. He is the reigning MVP of the league and when you let Lamar run and you let Lamar get his wheels under him and get him going he will murder you you have to stop that going back to the safeties one of them's gonna have to come down and be a spy now that does mean one less person in coverage but I'm comfortable with that because of the struggles of the Ravens wide receiving court I am comfortable with that Lamar you can't simulate like Logan Ryan said you cannot simulate a guy like that you know in practice it's almost impossible to do so but you definitely can't stop him. Lamar has struggled in games where his running game was stopped. When the Ravens offense have struggled and sputtered, it's been when the running game has stopped and he's forced to pass and his wide receivers are forced to make plays. That is how you kill him and have a spy on him because you don't want him doing what Kyler Murray did, except this will be worse because he's a way better runner than Kyler Murray. Like, you know, no disrespect to Lamar because I do think he's a, he's a good quarterback in the NFL. Not a great, but good quarterback but there's a reason there's memes made saying that he's a running back it's because he's the best at doing that in in the nfl from the qb position and then do not forget mark andrews who i think has been probably the ravens biggest wide receiving threat or receiving threat kind of like the giants biggest receiving threat this year has been evan ingram don't forget him but i think listen mark ingram can murder us 
because uh, we haven't been great at defending the tight end position. You know, for the past 10 years, we haven't been great at it. We've been better at it this year. Uh, but if Ingram, I, I keep saying Mark Ingram. I mean Mark Andrews. What am I saying? Mark Andrews. I'm sorry. <laughs> but if Mark Andrews is the only receiving weapon that's going off, I'm going to be okay with that. Because that means the wide receivers aren't doing anything. And that means the running game probably isn't doing anything as well. If Mark Andrews ends up having like a 100-yard game, does it look good? Nah. But if he's the only receiving threat with 100 yards, I might be fine with that. Whoever's going to be matched up against them, whether it's Tay Crowder from the second middle linebacker position, whether it's Blake from the first, although I think, you know, it would be smarter to use him a lot more in the run game to stop that run. Whether it's one of the safeties, you know, Peppers or Ryan, whoever's matched up against him, that's going to be a nice, nice matchup to look at. Andrews is a very underrated tight end in the NFL. And that, that's really where I think this game is going to be played. Our offense, I mean, our defense versus their offense, which isn't a surprise concerning how disappointing our offense has been. And, and now getting to that, it's going to have to be going through Wayne Gallman in the run game. Shout out to the Wayne train. If we want to score points, we're going to have to do something here on the offensive side of the ball. Because I think that we can do what we did against uh, the Cardinals. I think we can do what we did against the Browns and what we did against the Seahawks. You know what that was? Have great defensive games where our defense hold these explosive offenses down to really low points for them at least. Like Cleveland was scoring 40 plus coming into that game. Our defense held them out to just 20. That is a winnable game. We could not close out because our offense just could not score. We were moving the ball, you know, against Cleveland as well. We couldn't capitalize in the end zone. And sometimes against the other two, we just couldn't move the ball. You know what you got to do? Establish the running game and keep it consistent. Let Wayne Gallman run and don't stop feeding him the rock. I mean, he got the rock just a couple of, what, like nine times last week? But he was running good and for some reason we weren't giving it to him more. Let Wayne Gallman run and this offense will, you know, start to churn a little bit. Don't, don't step away from it. You let Alfred Morris get in there a little bit as well, but I think definitely feed Wayne Gallman a bit more. Nine carries is not nearly enough for an entire game. If our defense comes out there and does another stellar job, and you know what that is, holding them down to 20. Because this Ravens offense does have the potential to go off. I mean, you know, 42 against the Jags. Well, granted, it is the Jags, but still dropping 42 on somebody's head. If they, if they, you know, ooh. If they have a chance to go off, but our defense holds them down, it's really left up to the offense at that point. They're going to have to capitalize and they're going to have to score points. You do that through a run game, even in the end zone. Run the ball in the, you know, in the red zone a little bit. I don't know what's so hard about that. And then when it comes to the passing game here, and in the passing game, definitely going to need to be utilized a bit. I mean, although I will be glad if we win this game completely through the run, you're going to want to avoid a guy, you know, in Marlon Humphrey, who's been having a little bit of a good year here. The Ravens secondary is very underrated in my opinion. They got really good cornerbacks back there, especially when healthy. And even, you know, they're missing two of the top three corners in uh, Marcus Peters. And oh man, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting old dude's name that plays next to Marcus Peters. They're still doing well without them. You're going to want to be careful of them and not make mistakes, protect the football. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's DJ or Colt McCoy, don't make a stupid throw. They'll, they'll punish you for it. Do not underestimate that second. That secondary, funnily enough, is actually really, really good against the deep ball. So, but they're really weak against the middle and short passing game. So this will be one game. You know, we always get mad at Jason Garrett for not taking deep shots and he will be calling the plays again. This will be one game where him taking those medium shots might help us out because that's where that secondary struggles for. So for the passing game, yo, keep it in the medium game. Keep it in the short, but mix up the routes. Don't just do curl routes now, Jason Garrett. But that is going to be, you know, kind of what the Giants have to do to win this game. And honestly... I hope that we do because that keeps us alive so much, but I will be predicting a Giants loss here. Um, definitely low scoring. I, like I said, I got confidence in our defense. I think the, the Ravens are going to win, you know, 20 to 14. So at least I'm giving the Giants two touchdowns, which I really don't know if the offense can do. I hope they can. But that's what I'm saying for now. I wish the Giants would go above that. Prove me wrong on the offensive side and win this game. Put your thoughts down below and let me know what you think. And I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.